We are Aidridge because we create remedies for life made by light. I'm Scarlett Vesper, aka Mrs. V, and founder of Aidridge.co, your go to place for Aidridge remedies to help you find love, get rich, awaken your intuition, and feel free. So now let's open the remedy kit and discover why we're all Aidridge. Hello and welcome to my first episode of Aidridge, which is going to be all about career remedies. And I know with my own career, I've had quite a few changes and I'm going to share what remedy came out for me from navigating all those incredible changes I've experienced through my lifetime. I've always loved the word ageless because it spoke to me of the part of the self that is forever, which is our soul. There was always an elephant in the room with ageless, and that is the fact that we do age. Our bodies get older, and no one really wants to talk about that. But there is something wonderful that happens as we get older, and that is that we find the wisdoms from our lived life. We gain incredible experience and learnings from that, and we get a deeper sense of confidence about who we are. And they are precious things. And it's like in Indigenous culture is they look to the elders for that knowledge, for those remedies for life that they've learned. And they impart those on young people, people the same age, any age, and we've lost that. So when I came up with the idea of age rich, the word, which was in the shower, of course, I loved it because I felt the richness of who I am today to all the challenges, and I've had a lot, that richness no one can ever take from me. And so I created Age Rich to be a place where people can really embrace who they are and understand the importance of ageing in order to have that rite of passage to discover their qualities, their wisdoms, and then to impart that onto others. And, you know, today we're in a world of many, many coaches and many spiritual teachers because this is the time people need help and support. And, you know, as we move out of the area of seeing that things aren't as important and, in fact, the emptiness or the loneliness people are feeling, especially after COVID, means we really have to dig deeper into who we are as a human race and that is about connection, that is about support of that connection and also trusting ourselves enough and believing in ourselves and understanding what that actually means. So who am I? I am a alchemist, I am a guide and a healer and my own career path is my little Luna in the background, you can see, having a little play. I think my career is indicative of the rite of passage that we need to go through in our life and it is through our career and that's what I believe. So what are the remedies that I've found? And I think, you know, my own career has changed from um, film industry as director, agency producer and advertising. Uh, I then went as brand expert then video editor, website designer, um, coach, speaker, and then now healer and guide. Now, does it mean I don't do any of those other parts? I absolutely do all those other um, things in my life, in my work today. But it's taken a, a process of me in my career changing to learn about who I am, to push that aspect of my career and see how it fits. Is it something I wanted to go further with um, or not? And I work with a lot of people around their careers in branding and personal brand, and I know that there's the parts that we want to throw out those aspects, but they come with us. They're part of us. We have to embrace them, even though we want to kind of move on. And the alchemy of our personal brand is actually bringing those aspects together. So it might be the culmination of the different parts of who you are. And it's actually owning and loving them and seeing how they all fit together, which is where the magic happens. The first part of the remedy is really about not judging your career path. And I think we think, oh my goodness, I've got to have one career path and that's it. But there are a lot of people who have many 
And if you look at it at that rite of passage, you can see it's actually very healthy. I was blessed because when I went into the film industry, there are many different roles in there. You know, you've got lighting, you've got camera, you've got directing, you've got art department, um, props, you've got accounting, like it is a world, it's in a world. And what I loved about it is you could move really quickly because people could see in there the potential that you have. And you could say, oh, look, I just want to jump over here and try that. And you move really fast. So I learned that ability to pivot and to not judge myself for it and be open and listen for new opportunities. So don't judge yourself around that. Um, and also checking in with purpose in your career. Uh, the question that I think is really important to ask yourself is, how do I feel about that? Is there a heart connection to what I'm doing? Now, I have also worked with many people who um, – are not feeling it in their heart, but they want to stay there because they have a long-term goal being over there. And that's okay as well. And sometimes when I've worked with people in their career and they feel that they need to stay there and I encourage them to stay and talk about the ways to stay and then they realise that they want to move on. So there is no uh, right or wrong. It's just really trying to drop into the truth as much as you can. And thirdly, it's the modern day rite of passage and to see it as your soul's journey. And that's so important because it means that you're always going to stay present with what you're doing. Um, you're going to have the heart connection with it. And I talk about heart a lot because that's where our soul lives. It's how we connect to the truth about why we're here and what we're doing. So connecting to that will always bring you back to the truth about why you're doing it. What's your motivation? Um, are you going against something that doesn't feel right? And if you are, why? And that is my remedy for career in a nutshell. I do also have a couple of articles that deep dive into certain aspects. So I'll put those in the link below. And right now we're going to be talking to an amazing expert. And I'm so excited. She's my first interviewer. It's Josephine Corcoran, who's a stellar alchemist. And she's an incredible uh, astrologer and holistic executive coach. She's worked with a lot of people around navigating through a career change. And around the astrology part is seeing how that all comes together really beautifully. So excited to hear her remedies that she's found through her own career change and path that she's on right now. So with no further ado, Josephine Corcoran. So here we are with the gorgeous Josephine Corcoran, Stella Alchemist. <laughs> and I love everything that you do. I mean, we've known each other for a while now and I just, watching the progress from being that holistic executive coach and really owning astrology and bringing it in in such a beautiful culmination to being the Stella Alchemist you are now uh, has been a joy. So, um, and I'm glad people will get to uh, meet you today. Oh, thank you, Scarlett. Well, you've been a, a huge advocate and a huge support. So when someone creates that that beautiful vessel to 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 be in that safe space to allow yourself to authentically blossom, um, it makes a huge, huge difference. Well, thank you. Just so you know what Josephine's talking about there, I have been part of Josephine's branding and website design. And so I've definitely seen the growth and um loved and it's just been a joy to kind of be part of something that you totally believe in like for me and that's so important in my work that you know I see the possibility and I see the heart and I see the magic that you know that's created so mm. yeah it's very blessed in that front so I'm so excited today because you know we're talking about age rich we're talking about career remedies and I wanted to first ask you you know what is what is your go-to kind of life remedy that you have formulated up to today? <laughs> oh, look, such a great, great question. And I had to, well, the first thing that comes to mind uh, in terms of my remedy, based on my life experience and my growth personally and professionally, I would say is, the importance of honouring yourself and honouring all aspects of yourself and really creating the space to connect with and understand 
those parts of yourself that you love and even to embrace those shadow components and bring them close. So honoring the whole of yourself is probably my number one life remedy for oh, me. I love that. And it's so true because I think that's the whole part of the age which aspect, which is really at the base of it is self-love and really finding the confidence, you know, like a deep confidence that has been built from the journey and from the learning and the challenges and turning that love into, it is like a respect, isn't it? You start to really respect where you've been and, and, and that changes everything in your life, I think. Mm. <clears throat> And really, it's intertwined into the work that I do and the conversation that we're going to be having today. So it's little surprise that's my my life mantra because my life and my work really do feel like they are one in the same. Yeah, absolutely. And well, we'll talk about you know I'll talk about my experience with you after this. But let's let's talk then about what is your career remedy that you know you've found up to now, and I'm sure you work with many people on. What's your best career remedy? Well, first I'll come from the perspective as a professional career coach and somebody that's working with people who are at a crossroads in their career. And the reason that people will come to somebody like me is because they're, they've either found themselves in a situation where they've no longer got work um, and they want to make a good choice or they want to find work that's more meaningful and purposeful for them as they move forward. Or it might be somebody within a role and they want to find more meaning and purpose and they want to take their abilities to the next level so that they can improve that sense of meaning and also get better results. So there's a number of reasons why people might kind of come to me from a career development perspective. Mm. And all of that um, essentially comes back to what I would consider the main remedy for working on your career. So regardless of whether that the, the choice to work on your career is forced upon you or it's something that's come up inside of you um, and that there's a new level of awareness of an importance of actually really enjoying work, um, I would say the remedy is actually largely the same. So the first part of the remedy is very, the most important part of the remedy is learning how to shine the light within. Learning the importance of understanding who you are and what it is that you have ab available within you to be able to exchange and contribute that talent into an organisational setting or even into your own brand and your own business. So the, the first stage of any kind of career remedy is to really unpack what your innate abilities are. And, Love it. and really what that process does time after time, and I've just got off the phone to a, a director in Singapore, and she has she, she, she said, you know, I just feel so much more confident in who I am and what what started off as a process of her feeling like she needed to leave her role to find more meaning and purpose externally has actually ended up her staying and stepping more boldly, more confidently and more humbly into her leadership position. And that has shifted everything in her team and her relationship on the executive committee. And a lot of that is due to her doing the work and really understanding who she is at the core and falling back in love with who she is. So that's the first component. And, and from my perspective, as far as remedies are concerned, that's the number one. And it's the area that I'm the most passionate about supporting people to do. And like you were saying with your gifts, you know, um, and really supporting people's growth, mine is really seeing what people are fully capable of in terms of their professional work. Yeah, so whatever process and journey that involves for an individual, you can you can embark on doing that for yourself through different self-development programs, or you can go and see somebody like myself who really gives you a structured process to do that and brings a number of different tools to the table to just provide a reflection point and help you see who you are. 
I love that because um, it's it's and people you you think it's kind of like a, a bit of a no brainer to have a look at where you are, but people don't do it. They don't think to kind of have that. And I guess you know, firstly to articulate that that's what it is, and of course then finding the tools to help them to do it. Um, I love it, and you know because of the astrology aspects, which is really interesting, is. It is that really focusing down and having a look really into who you are on a whole mm. other level. And just so you know, I've had a um, session with astrology with Josephine. It's been incredible. I had quite a, a kind of a cathartic uh, moment with it because it, you know, allowed me to see some aspect which I forgave myself for and also made me understand why I behave a certain way, which was fantastic. So it's almost like, you know, people do those um, forms or things to find out your strengths and weaknesses. This is just on a whole other level. <laughs> yes. And look, I mean, while we're going down that path, I mean, that's a big part of my remedy toolkit is because mm. for such a long time I was using traditional psychometric profiling tools, which certainly have their place because they create a platform for conversation about what are you good at and what sorts mm. of things create stress and tension for you and let's look at where that sort of lies in terms of the kind of work that you want to do. There's certainly validity in using those tools and they're very powerful and they've been used for decades. But when I actually did start working with astrology, I could see that very quickly it gave you the opportunity to go really much deeper and to see what's sort of sitting beneath the surface and um, what are the, some of the subconscious patternings that, that potentially are involved with sabotaging or cause, cause you to consistently experience similar kinds of um, patterns in your relationship within an organisation or with your boss or with your colleagues. So, yes, there's, that's why when I started studying astrology as a part-time hobby, I soon realised, no, no, this is not going to be a part-time thing. This is so powerful. If I could use this to help people really deeply connect with the essence of themselves, that gives them complete permission to be themselves and to shine brightly. No holds bars. Oh, absolutely. It, it made me, it, it just allowed me to understand my behaviour exactly as you're saying. And then I, and yeah, there was a kind of a freeing experience and also then what, to work on and why I'm always drawn with community because that's in my, you know, my chart and, you know, because I was just thought, oh, what am I doing? But then I was able to own it, you know, and go, oh, that's part of my makeup. It's part of my purpose. It's my blueprint. So I think that's what's so special about it. And so in terms of, you know, doing that deeper dive as a remedy for people to do, mm. um, apart, of course, seeing you as uh, number one. <laughs> I'd like to recommend to do their chart but what else can they look to um in terms of career what's part of that remedy that you could suggest okay well I was going to say that it's it, it's one thing to know what your strengths are and what you're here to be able to do but another component of that is really from a career perspective it's really important to understand what you need so what nourishes you what feeds you what fills you up and that can be from that sort of fundamental emotional level. And that is really important because, you know, different environments will be able to satiate your needs in different ways. But the needs component of self is um, often hidden from view from ourselves. And many are not even very conscious of what their needs are. And even when you ask them to do um, a mercurial or intellectual dive into it, um, they can struggle to do that. So I would say one of the second, my second part of the remedy is not just knowing how you can shine and what you can do, but then the most important thing is to understand, well, what do I need? Because if your needs are being met, then you're able to play to your strengths. But if your needs aren't being met, that's when your stress behaviour can kick in. You can become more reactive. You can have old patterns surfacing. And then that's when you start to find this um, 
agitation that has you feel like, well, this job's just creating tension. I'm not experiencing any joy in it. So that's a really important mm, part of the remedy huge. as well. And look, you can do that in a number of ways. You can you can just you pose it as a question and journal about what your needs are. You can reflect on roles that you've done in the past and um, and look at which were the roles that you enjoyed doing the most and perhaps what was what needs were being met in that at that time. You can look at the companies that you've worked for that you got a buzz from working with and you can really reflect on what were the what was happening there, how did that meet my needs. And then, of course, we always will look at, from a career perspective, look at the underlying value set, which is different to your needs because your values are really that stabilising principle that you have about what's important in life and what you want to commit to honouring. And so there needs to be a strong sense of those values being able to be lived in the work mm. that you do mm. um, in any mm. environment that you're operating in. Yeah. Because it's interesting and the needs is, like when I think about needs now, I kind of go, oh, what do I need? <laughs> like this is a whole different thought change, you know, versus values or, you know, that aspirational apart. But, uh, yeah, I think it's it's... Yeah, it's interesting. It just changes the whole thing. I mean, do you find that there are people who have, you know, difficulty finding what their needs are? And why do you think that happens? Oh, <clears throat> some people have never really felt like they're worthy enough to um, allow themselves to be nourished or to nourish themselves. Um and that can be something they've never even recognised about themselves, that they haven't thought to invest in themselves or, and, and haven't necessarily known how best to service those needs, if you like. Um, and then there are others that can clearly see, oh, I need my independence or I need to be able to um, initiate and start things on my own or others that need guidance or others that need lots of development. You know, that some, some things are obvious, but some things can be a little bit more subtle. And it just depends, to be honest, it depends on the individual um, as to how easily they can access what their needs are. However, we can look to situations where they've perhaps experienced tension and um, they've had a run-in, whether it's with a colleague or whether it's with a client, and you can start to unpack it that way. And you can really use an example. If you want to really uncover your needs, the best place to start is to look at when something was dysfunctional and it caused you to behave in a way that's actually um, not, you know, the opposite of who you are when you're playing to your strengths. Oh, I love that. That's great advice. Very, very good advice. It's really clear because, yeah, it'll show up. I mean, that's the beauty about challenges, isn't it? Because we get to see what's actually going on. Do you think that issue around um, women, you know, and the whole value, um, valuing ourselves comes from a particular age group? Because I've been talking a couple of other podcasts around, you know, as us, um, a lot of women our age don't think about ourselves. We've been brought up that we can't, you know, if we look after ourselves, we're selfish. Mm. And whereas the younger generation at the moment are kind of okay with that. They get to see that it's not selfish. It's actually part of a healthy life. So do you find in that with women that there's a bit of that um, not willing to do it? Uh, I Look, you definitely, there's definitely... I'm going to say until now, <laughs> there has been, you know, significant trends around that. But since 2020 and what I would call a real demarcation in moving from the old to the new, what I'm really noticing now is a client base that's become way more open to um, really wanting to be connected consciously to the world and are recognising that it's time to put themselves first and they're letting go of any paradigm um, quite easily. It's almost like they're shedding the skin or shedding any old kind of 
version of, oh, I can't invest in me first. I feel like it's just a big ball rolling down a hill, gathering, you know, not gathering any moss. It's just coming at speed. And it's beautiful to watch mm. because mm. there's this <clears throat> thirst to feel and experience meaning and connection and um, live in a much more, in a way that's way more co-creative with the environment they're operating in, with being in nature. And there's a, there's, there's a, people are just thirsty for that. So I've seen a huge turnaround and that doesn't really seem to matter whether the individual I'm working with is in their twenties or whether they're in their sixties. Mm. And, um, because this thirst has really kicked in and COVID has been the big opportunity for people mm. to slow down, get out of the old environments and go, well, hang on, if I'm not going to do life, like the way that I was doing it was just a pattern I ended up in because that's how we were expected to behave. And now there's this huge review. Um, and mm. if we want to call it the great resignation or some organizations I'm talking to are calling it the great reshuffle. Um, it's, it's just that people are look, they've, they've become a lot more um, aware of fundamentally what their values are and their priorities are. And as a result, they're open to what can I do to really understand myself better so that I can move from moving forward. I can, I can work in a way that's much more purposeful and enjoyable and gets results with ease and even grace. See, I love that. And I mean, hence, of course, why age rich is existing <laughs> because of that whole aspect of, you know, very much of what you've just been talking about, that waking up and seeing, and you can see it, everybody's wanting more, the great resignation or the reshuffle, whatever it is, people are going, I, I want to feel you know, connected to something. I want to be aligned with the values and agree with them and I want to be appreciated and loved in, in what I do. And so then it is to get to that point, it's almost like, well, I'm here, I'm feeling that. What is it doing to me internally? How do I, what do I do with that? How does it play out in a practical form? And, you know, one of the steps yeah. is, and I guess the age rich part is appreciating where you've been and all the skill sets that you brought together. And from my personal brand point of view is, and I always say, look, the more skills and career changes you've had, the better, you know, like it's a healthy, you know, expression and experience. And you can bring that to the table because innovation and creativity is so at the fore. And so we are rich with so much as we get older. And I love that, you know, I'm hearing you saying that it is much more on the forefront in where you're doing that people are seeing that value, which is fantastic. I mean, yeah. in terms of your own journey, like, and being age rich and like, was there a particular turning point where you found that the honoring yourself or really, which is showing and appreciating everything where you've been. Was there something that happened or what do you think it was? I'm, yeah, look, these things really percolate like a very slow percolating coffee for years. <laughs> I can't pinpoint like one moment in time. I know I came out of the womb asking the question why. <laughs> I know I came out of the womb um genuinely interested in in people and genuinely curious about what work they did and why they choose to do that work so i i learned to um you know really just understand i suppose motivations and drivers and skill sets and so forth from a young age the turning point, if there was to be a particular moment in time without question, is becoming a parent mm -hmm. and that shift from full time, five days a week, long hours, going into the office, being in the office, socialising, coming home, you know, doing your work, coming home, um, to suddenly <laughs> looking after kids, nappies, and then looking for ways to... Um, you know, worked that work for the family and that work for you. And so um, it was just before that time that I started studying um, astrology. And the 
the, 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 I suppose there's almost a little bit of a lineup because astrology allowed me to go a lot deeper into the essence of who I was be, more than any other tool that I'd taken mm. or, or any other tests that I'd taken. But, I mean, I had always been interested in self-reflection tools. Um, it's just the nature of who I am. But what happened after giving having children was, Yes, an, an even deeper yearning to understand self because here I am responsible for these two little human beings and wanting to be the best version of me so I could be a light for them um, and in some way support and shape and inspire them to do the same for themselves. So that would probably be the turning point. Mm. And if it hadn't been that, I would absolutely say that COVID would have done a sort of a similar thing. So for those who are listening that perhaps, you know, haven't had children or haven't had that pause um, and that kind of alternative focus that you have to learn to integrate into your career and your personal life, um, yeah, COVID and a forced um, stopping or taking a sabbatical and taking a year off, that's why those kind of processes are incredibly powerful because you get to kind of think about what's most important. Yeah, I think those challenges, you know, their challenges are set to <clears throat> open up a part of ourselves and see something. And I know sometimes at the time it's very hard to see <laughs> why, but always I look back and I go, oh, like their gifts, you know, at the time is how we learn and grow and whatever that looks like. And, yes, having a child is a huge challenge. I mean, I remember it's like, oh, my God, my whole world went upside down. It was like, <laughs> oh, my God. And, yeah, you wouldn't. I'm sure every parent says it. You absolutely couldn't imagine your life without them and you love them. But, oh, my goodness, it's hard, you know, and it's challenging and, and it you're confronted with everything. and But there is a gift in there. Yeah. So amazing, amazing. So how can people find you and um, get to work with you? Uh, they can find me at josephinecorcoran.com. So maybe pop a link in the notes yes. for the spelling of that. Uh, that's the easiest thing. The, the best way is just to book a, an inquiry chat with me and we can talk through where they're at and look at what sorts of options might suit them in terms of supporting them on their transition journey. And um, I work within organisations as well. So if any of the listeners out there are thinking about ways in which they can support the development of their people by raising their confidence, having them um, reframe almost the way they're viewing the opportunities for them in the organisation, reviewing the way they operate as a leader in the organisation, they can also find me at that same location. And, of course, I'm on LinkedIn um, and on Instagram and on Facebook as Josephine Corcoran Holistic Career Coach. Yes, and I'll put all the links below so you can find her. And she has her own amazing podcast as well. And you do a, a group um, where you can join to Astrology for Business, which is amazing. And uh, you do charts as well as sessions. She does it all. So we'll, uh, I'll put the link below. Thank you so much. So grateful oh. to have you on the show. And our first one. <laughs> So uh, welcome. Amazing, amazing. Thank you for having me, Scarlett. And, um, yeah, look forward to seeing you soon. See you soon. Bye. Okay, bye, darling.